well done. Money, money. So Adrian, welcome back to Perth. Thanks, mate. Good to see you, Richie. Yeah, thanks yeah. for uh, thanks for being here, mate. It's a bit of a surprise. Yeah. How was your trip to Russia? Fantastic, mate. Big eye opener. It's usual to always learn learn a bit more when you go there. And um, there was a you know caught up with a lot of great people and met lots of new great people that I hadn't met before that I'd uh, heard of and uh, like you know like the George Galloway and those sort of people got to spend a bit of time with. So no, look, great time and um, yeah, it was. I'm very lucky to to have um, had the experience I've just had. What was your reason for going over to Russia? Look, there was um, we had an invitation um, to uh, to talk at a couple of conferences. I was over there with John Shipton, as you may have seen. Um, John and I were travelling together, and we decided to uh, go at the time while the BRICS conference was happening to um, try and be there while um, yeah, global the global South was making history in a in a new political paradigm with uh, with the BRICS. And um, so it was really interesting to be there for that and to experience the energy and the uh, and the uh, yeah, I guess the um, the the world changing um, politics that was happening while we're there. So, so while you were away, we had the premier calling you, uh, pushing right wing ideologies, saying you should step down and all this stuff. What do you think of the premier's comments? Oh, uh, look, it's the, the the premier. The premier is, uh, you know, he's embarrassed himself. He he insulted initially our our uh, council because of uh, our uh, questioning towards the. Um, the COVID-19 uh, vaccine contamination issues that we've that have uh, recently been discovered, and um, of course, when I uh, when I went to Russia, he uh, he was able to take his focus off the council and put it on me because obviously the the Russia thing is always a, a good selling point for him. But I think uh, now that um, now there's been a change of government in the U.S. while I was away, it's certainly um, I think it'll uh, tone his rhetoric down a little bit. Yeah, that was going to be my next question. What do you think of the victory of for Trump and now uh, what what uh, ramifications do you think it'll have on Australia coming up to the elections next year? Look, it's a really interesting question. I, I um, of course, there's a lot of hope. Um, you know, of, of course, you know we've seen we've seen just so much horrible stuff happen in the world the last four years. The um, the the Biden administration was um, most definitely asleep at the wheel, and I think. Um, you know, it's a real win for uh, you know truth and decency, and certainly um, you know let's hope let's hope the rhetoric and the uh, and the and the talking points and the promises made by um, Trump and his campaign team, particularly uh, you know around uh, around health and stuff, with uh, with uh, Bobby Kennedy coming onto his crew. Hopefully, these changes can actually take place. But um, you know, yet to be seen. He's fighting against a very uh, embedded deep state that has um, got other ideas. So fingers crossed, he can. Um, you know, he's, he's been fortunate to capture the House and also the Senate. So, you know, it's um, it's sort of lucky that maybe we're perhaps we're lucky he didn't get in on the last round in 2020 because he wouldn't have had had the majority in the houses that he has now. So hopefully the changes, the changes that he's promised, he's much uh, more able to make. So, look, fingers crossed that we can see uh, peace, particularly in, uh, in in Russia and also, of course, in the Middle East. So let's 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 hold him, uh, hold his feet to the fire and keep him to his word. For sure. Thanks, Adrian. Welcome back. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. Good to see you, mate.